Good afternoon, everybody. Hopefully I am uh, live here. This is Joe Lucy. I'm Certified Finance Planner, CEO of Secured Retirement. And I want to welcome everybody to this week's Market Huddle. Um, this week, um, we are going to be talking about how higher taxes are um, around the corner and how we can defend ourselves. Now, we've all known for a while that higher taxes are coming. And the current administration and the White House has even campaigned on raising taxes. Um, and here it's all coming to kind of final fruition here. It seems as if um, we are going to see some changes uh, for sure for 2022. And there are some proposals that would make some changes even backdating to, back to September here. So. Um, you know, the government's final proposal or their most recent proposal is about $2.9 trillion in tax increases. And these are going to affect our clients and our clients' um, retirement accounts, capital gains, estate taxes, um, and more. So I think it's time that we start really focusing on taxes. I know a lot of our clients here at Secure Retirement are working with this number one, because they want to make sure that they have enough income to spend in retirement throughout their retirement without, um, you know, be the ability to spend in confidence. Number two, it's about morally, ethically, and legally reducing our taxes. And I know many of you that are joining us here today, that that's one of the main reasons you've decided to entrust us with your retirement savings. And then the third is to grow wealth, but we never want to do that to compromise those first two areas. And while we've been talking about tax changes and how we're at 40 year lows for some time, um, there seems to be a real big uh, push, some momentum towards doing that now. So welcome to this week's market huddle. I know a lot of you are concerned about raising interest or taxes and, and how that's going to impact us. And it's even more concerning as we start to peel back this proposal. So while some of the tax changes are expected, there are some that are not so expected and a little bit of surprises. And while a lot of this has been positioned to only impacting the ultra wealthy, um, you know, I, I, I believe that, that a lot of us, uh, mass affluent, the middle income are going to start to see um, uh, these changes in our own retirement planning. So this week's uh, uh, market huddle, higher taxes that are coming and some things that we can do to prepare ourselves for them. Uh, here's this disclaimer. We oftentimes put this up there. We do it with every one of these. Keep in mind that I don't work for the government. I don't have any inside information on exactly what kind of changes are gonna occur. Um, I don't work for the Social Security Administration, and we, um, while we do a lot of tax planning here, we are not doing tax preparation, and we also are not, um, uh, you know, attorneys. So if we talk about something around estate planning, that uh, uh, we want to make sure that we're working with other professionals with our retirement planning. So, with that said, um, before I go forward, I want to go backwards just a second. Last Thursday on September 30th, we had a tremendous event. Um, this is a picture with me and Ed Slot. We had almost 200 families in the room with us. Um, my goal after the, or with that event was that we were hoping that we would be able to um, have some kind of replay, some way that you, those of you that weren't able to join us would be able to um, see the information we had. But instead, um, because of uh, some, some um, issues with uh, what Ed's comfortable with us, um, uh, uh, preparing or packaging up, we've decided that what instead we will do next week's market huddle. And I'm going to talk about the three takeaways that I want everybody to have gotten from the tax smart retirement summit that we did here last week with that slot where we had the over 200 families. So you're going to want to make sure you see next week's uh, market huddle. If you were able to join us, it was it's going to be hopefully a good review. And if uh, you weren't able to join us, hopefully we can share some of that information with you that we shared with the 200 families that were able to join us last week at the uh, Doubletree. Um, also, hey, bookmark your um, calendars. I don't have the exact date as we're talking about this right now, um, but we are bringing in David Walker for the next TaxSmart Summit. We're hoping to again have 200 families um, 
I think it's going to be at the Marriott here in St. Louis Park next time. But we are bringing in David Walker. If you don't know who David Walker is, he was the controller general, the number one tax accountant for the federal government under both Reagan and uh, Jimmy, or not Jimmy Carter, Reagan and Bill Clinton administrations. He was in that role for over 10 years, and he's going to have a great message about where he sees uh, taxes and tax rates going in, but we'll have to wait till the spring. So let's talk about what we can do now, because a lot of these tax changes that are being proposed are taxes that um, could very well, some of them could actually filter back into what we're doing today, meaning we don't know exactly how quickly the federal government's going to enact some of these tax changes. There's been a lot of discussion about possibly going backwards. Um, I've heard dates as uh, they could go back to January 1st. I think that's a little less likely. And they had talked about April 15th. Again, I think a little less likely. But could they uh, go back and backdate some of these proposed changes to uh, maybe September 15th? I think that they could. Um, so we're going to talk about it. Unfortunately, some of the just knowing about that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to have everything that we uh, need to do to, to, to make sure that we're planning accordingly. But more importantly, it really kind of reiterates what I've been saying for some time. Taxes are going to be changing. We are at 40 year lows right now. And um, I think that the timing of these changes is going to occur possibly even faster than the 2026, January 1st, 2026 date that we've been talking about for some time. What are some of those? Well, a recent article of Forbes that talked about the House Ways and Means Committee and this legislation that they're proposing around individual tax rates um, to pay $3.5 trillion for uh, uh, the new budget um, and what they're considering, it's gonna have some major um, revisions around tax law, capital gains taxes, and even the way our retirement accounts are going to, what our, what our options are gonna be. A lot of this really comes down to an article here um, that was out, I think the Wall Street Journal was the one that released it here about six months ago about a gentleman by the name of Peter Thiel. If you don't know who he is, he is one of the founders of PayPal. And Peter Thiel has a $5 billion Roth IRA. That's $5 billion with a B. And um, there are certainly a lot of uh, discussions about whether or not now that he's got these accounts and these tax-free accounts, is it somewhat abusive? Is it something that only the rich are able to take advantage of? Obviously not. A lot of our families have been taking advantage of the same things that Peter Thiel was able to do. Most of our clients, however, uh, do not have $5 billion in their, in their um, Roth IRA. In fact, I believe he is the only one. And the numbers kind of come down to families that have even over a million in their Roth IRAs um, are less than like 2% of the overall population. But because this has generated a little bit of media um, excitement, there's going to, there's some proposed changes about what's going to be allowed with regarding Roth IRAs and what have you. One of the proposals I saw is that if you ever get to a $5 million number in your retirement accounts, they're going to say no more retirement accounts, no more 401k, no more 403b, no more IRA or Roth IRA once you get to that certain level. Now, the interesting thing, and, and Ed actually talked about this last week, imagine that you had a $5 million retirement account and you're talking about not being able to contribute another 6000 or 7000 if you're over age 50. How much does that really matter to you? It's really not that punitive to those very large account holders because another $5,000 or $7,000 to these accounts doesn't add up. Um, what it is going to be is an attack on savers that are um, uh, like many of our clients, those families that are doing the right thing and, and what have you. Now, they may start with $5 million. I if we look at the way that the government tends to work, they start with these high numbers and over time it starts to impact more and more families. That's why I think it's so important to bring tax planning into your retirement planning today. I think of it as a three-legged stool, right? There's the wealth accumulation, very important. There's also the income planning. How do we make sure our money's gonna last a lifetime and how do we take it back and how do we do it tax efficiently? And that's really where this is gonna come into play. How do we make sure that the families that we serve are in a better position um, to uh, to take advantage of what's available to us today, knowing that many of these are gonna start disappearing. Uh, capital gains, we have a lot of clients that have capital gains. They, whether they purchased um, 
you know, a stock that's done well for them, or maybe they bought some property or maybe even inherited a farm from a mom or dad. And here they are with a low cost basis on this property. When they sell that, they're talking about raising capital gains rates. The tax on the top capital gains rate, they're talking about going from 20 to 25 percent. This is the one where I really think that they could go backwards. If they were to make some major changes around capital gains rates and say, let's say they pass something on December 1st, they almost have to go retroactive on this because if they made a proposal to raise capital gains rates or tax, uh, the taxes on those gains in your accounts and said you have 30 days to, to recognize them, it could be devastating to the market performance. They obviously don't want to see a whole lot of that. So that would be one that when they pass it, it will probably very likely either be effective the day that they pass it or even go backwards a little bit. So we want to be thinking about that. If you're a family that's got large capital gains, we should be talking about some of the options that we have, a plan A, what, what do we do um, uh, if they don't do anything right away? And number two is plan B, what happens if they make a law change or legislative change that would go retroactive and what are some things we can do. Ultimately, really what it is is sitting down with a trusted professional, somebody like uh, the team here and reviewing how our plan works and how we can be looking at this. Another budget plan that has uh, what they're referring to is trying to fix this marriage penalty uh, because married couples, um, uh, you know, they're saying that if you're in that, above the 450,000 range and you're filing a joint tax return, they're talking about raising the rate there to almost 40%, 39.6. Of course, in Minnesota here, I know many of the families are on the call here. Most of you are from Minnesota. We have other families joining us, I know from Wisconsin and what have you, but uh, you know, Tim Walls, he gets another 10% on top of that too. It's actually 9.8. They're talking about raising that to a 10.8 threshold. Um, if you're a higher earner right now, or if you have a property that might be sold that could raise your taxes one or two years, they want to start looking at that. Um, single tax buyers, they're talking about 400. Now, uh, reading between the lines here a little bit, again, I'm going to be making some forward statements about taxes in today's market huddle that I clearly cannot possibly know exactly what the ultimate um, uh, uh, decisions are going to be made. But we need to start thinking about that. And even if they're talking 450 here, 450,000 now, um, that's a number I think that over time is gonna start drifting into a situation where many, many of our clients are going to be impacted. So it's really about looking at your accounts today and starting to, to, to make some assessments on where you think they could go. You know, a lot of times families are surprised when we sit down with them um, and we start talking about retirement accounts and how required distributions work. These RMDs oftentimes can push us into higher brackets. Um, but if you're in your 60s and don't have to touch this money for 12 years until 72, sometimes uh, just doing a quick analysis at a, at a you know conservative rate of return, what can these accounts grow to? How much of the required distribution is going to be? Um, it's about doing some look forward planning and again, creating a primary contingency plan on what we can do and, and also, can, you know, this, the secondary plan. What else could be done in case it doesn't work uh, the best for us? It's about looking at what some of these proposals are and, um, you know, um, deciding if that's something that would work in our retirement planning or something we need to start planning around. A lot of the other planning uh, changes, a lot of the other tax changes have to do with corporate tax rates talking about raising corporate tax rates from a 21% right now in a C Corp to 28. Um, you know, I think that this is going to have a lot of impact on other areas, possibly inflation and, and um, you know, it fuels higher prices and it could mean, uh, you know, more layoffs and things like that too. So all of these proposals, the real reality is we don't know how soon they're going to uh, make some of these changes. Uh, we've been hoping that, uh, you know, when they passed the Trump tax plan, which put us at these 40 year lows that we probably had until 2026 on some of these, but it's quite possible. And I'm not making, uh, I'm not trying to say that it's definitely going to happen. Um, but there are some changes here that they're talking about possibly making much sooner. Um, so in other words, what I really think it means for families that we work with, we want to start looking at ways that we can take advantage of some tax planning strategies today 
in your retirement account, keeping in mind that everybody's going to have to have a tailored plan. Somebody that's going to uh, that that's um, maybe in a higher income threshold today than they might be in a year or two when they retire might have to be making different decisions. And somebody's got that's got a little bit more time, or somebody that's in a situation um, where uh, they they've got a lower income and taking advantage of that. It's about looking at capital gains now too, not just those retirement accounts like we've often focused on, but also if you have capital gains, what can we do? So um, let's talk about that. Uh, why is it crucial to take advantage of some tax planning strategies now? I've already kind of talked. I believe that the changes are going to happen sooner. There's no sign of a um, runaway spending slowing down anytime soon. You know, there's proposals out there for the infrastructure plan that, you know, we've already raised uh, somewhere between three and a half and five trillion dollars, depending on how you do your math around some of the stimulus that's been passed. There's another proposal out there to raise another between two other plans, you know, three and a half trillion. Um, you know, we're at a national debt right now of $28 trillion. And and there's really, um, it's like uh, going out and, and uh, um, maybe having a little bit too much fun on New Year's Eve. You're going to have to pay for it the next day. And next day could be in six months from now, or it could be, uh, uh, several years. But either way, I think we're going to have to start working our way through this as the economy recovers. And where they're going to be turning towards is always who they've looked at. Those that are paying taxes and how your tax return presents to the IRS. I still think that they're not going to go back uh, to a situation where they are going to be necessarily looking at your net worth, except for maybe the size of some of these IRA balances. But it's going to be about how the income that you're generating in retirement hits the tax return and repositioning things now. Uh, in two years alone, trillions of dollars have been spent on the stimulus package. We got the infrastructure, new social policy bills. There's a lot that's going on, and it really what it means uh, is quite simply higher taxes. So, um, if I asked you today, how much do you have in your retirement accounts? A lot of us can come up with a number that's in the IRA. But if I'm in a situation now where I have a mortgage, that mortgage is what is due to the IRS on that account. Let's say you had a half a million dollars. And if you're in a 20% tax bracket, eight, um, 80, uh, 500,000, you have 400,000 that's yours, 100,000 is what's owed to the IRS. Well, if they double taxes, like many are proposing, Forrest Magazine had a really interesting article about how the average retiree could end up being uh, twice the amount to try to uh, right size the budget. If we go from a 20% to a 40%, it means 100,000 less than that couple. Um, we have to start thinking about how much of this is ours. And really the only pill to take is how do we get some of this money into something that's more tax efficient? Uh, Ed Slot made a interesting comment last week. He said, tax, uh, he said, uh, a tax free is always better. You know, if we can get more money into tax free, put together a systematic plan, most families, that doesn't mean we, we move everything at once. It's about creating a plan that's tailored to their own situation so that we can um, uh, start to put them in a much better position. I think that one of the largest expenses as we get into retirement, a lot of times we say, what is that going to be? Families will say groceries. Sometimes they say health care. I think that for the vast majority of families, the highest expense in most retirements is going to be around taxes. And it's about addressing that now while we still have some time um, and start thinking about tax savings. Does it make sense to pay a little bit more tax today to try to put yourself in a better situation? I think most families it does. Um, ultimately at the end of today's uh, uh, market huddle, what I would like to see is that if we haven't visited with you around your taxes specifically and around some of these tax changes, let's sit down Make sure that we're addressing everything. Make sure we've got all bases covered so that we can do that. But it's about recognizing whether or not we should maybe doing some things around capital gains, keeping an active uh, investment strategy around that says if you have a taxable account, are we trying to offset losses to, to minimize the amount of tax on capital gains? Are there some things that we should be pushing off a year or two if we have a large loss? Sometimes it makes sense to do that. If you're going to do a large charitable gift, sometimes it makes sense to look at uh, if they make some of these tax changes, a charitable gift in a year might be much more beneficial for you 
than doing it today. So it's about looking at how we can incorporate, bring together tax planning with your overall financial situation, keeping in mind that the primary goal of most retirees is to make sure they can continue to spend in confident. And, and quite possibly, we might want to pay a little bit more tax today, but only when it makes sense. So that's something that we can make sure that we're doing with you. Uh, tax diversification is the other area I wanted to talk about here today. Keep in mind that, um, you know, a lot of times we've all been told that what we want to do when we were in our 30s and 40s is try to allocate or take as much of our income the wages that we're receiving and putting them into an account called a, you know, whether we call it an IRA or a 401k or a 403b into a tax deferred account. And many of you on the call, I see a lot of rec recognize a lot of the names here are, have done exactly what you were told to do. We took money that we could have spent on, on a nicer house, a new car, a vacation for the family, what have you. And we, we set it aside into this account. Now, when we did that, we got a tax deduction. We were told, what I call the biggest lie, is that we were told when we put that money into that account when we were in our 30s and 40s, we would be deferring tax at a higher level to take it out in retirement when our income needs were lower and therefore be in a lower level. Well, what 10,000 boomers, that's how many boomers are retiring every day, retire, oftentimes what they find is that their income needs or the amount of money that they're paying on the tax because of whether it's just the income that they need in their current tax brackets, a loss of deductions, things like that, or maybe you're forced to take out a required distribution starting at 72 and it represents money that you would rather continue to defer, but now you're forced to take out and pay tax. A lot of times what we're seeing our families, um, because tax needs have changed, is that, that 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 guideline that they had, putting aside money, deferring tax at a higher amount to take it out at a lower is just not the case. Keep in mind, there's other taxes um, outside of our tax return, the 1040 that we have to be concerned about. We have uh, social security benefits that by themselves are tax free, but when I combine it with other sources of income, start to create tax. So an IRA distribution could very well uh, cause you to pay tax, to, not only on the distribution, but also on social security benefits that otherwise would be tax free. It could be uh, higher Medicare premiums, paying a higher premium, which can be almost five times larger in some cases than what the basic Medicare Part B premiums are. And it's the same exact insurance. It's just simply because you had higher income. In some cases, it can be uh, planned around and controlled. In some cases, we just need to know what's coming. But it's really about that. Tax diversification is understanding that, wow, we've been told for many years that the number one savings vehicle should be a tax deferred account. In a lot of cases, what we want to start thinking about is how do I get some of our money into tax free, which is always preferable? How do I maybe even put it into something that's going to be taxed as we go, like a, a brokerage account versus just allowing it to accumulate? It's also about how which monies should be in which accounts, right? If I have... Um, let's say an annuity that is going to pay me an income stream. In some cases, it makes more sense to have that money in a IRA because of the growth in the IRA just represents higher required distributions down the road. But if I'm gonna need this money for income, imagine moving that into a Roth IRA where the income can be tax-free. Imagine turning that into something like some of the products that we have, which can generate income that increases over time and 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 historically, some cases, much faster than the cost of inflation, if that's all tax-free. So it really comes down to making sure we're looking at your specific needs and tailoring approach to that. So, uh, you know, today really about this market huddle was really just to address a couple things that I've been seeing lately that are starting to get a little bit more urgency to doing tax planning. Uh, trillions of dollars has been spent around the stimulus and it probably needed to be there's additional um, uh, proposals out there for infrastructure bills and what have you that they're talking about adding more. And now we're really starting to see uh, uh, the administration, legislature coming, proposals coming out where they're going to change these taxes maybe very, very soon. Some are going to be probably implemented right away or even uh, backdated. And some of them, uh, we still might have a little bit more time, but really sitting down with uh, the team here at Secure Retirement, addressing what it looks like for you. And let's start to put together a plan, a plan A that says, here's what we wanna do. 
plan B is what happens if it if it it doesn't work as well as we're hoping and we see something worse. How do we do that? And then obviously the other plan is if nothing do, does happen, which I think is unlikely, but if it did, can we live with the consequence of paying the additional taxes now? It's really about just looking at your overall strategy. Again, families hire us here because they want to have an income that they can spend in confidence. Number two, how do we morally, ethically, uh, legally reduce taxes and then growing your wealth without the compromise of those first two areas? And there's no better time than right now. We have uh, basically, we're already into the fourth quarter of this year. Much of the things that we want to do around tax planning should probably be done before December 31st or before these changes get implemented anyways. So it's really about uh, maybe the, the call here is just to basically say, hey, we've got some changes that are occurring and I want to make sure every one of the clients we serve or if you're uh, feeling like you're planning maybe incomplete around tax planning, let's sit down and see if there's ways that we can help you complete planning to, to help you reduce your tax burden over time. Uh, a lot of that has to do with tax diversification, understanding what these proposals are, and then uh, looking at our accounts and, and deciding which is the higher priority right now. Some area like a capital gains rate that could be going higher, or is it, is it really the IRA balance? And everybody that's on the call here today has a little bit different situation. So it's about really kind of making sure we're looking at all of that. Um, uh, Again, the simple strategies, you know, some of that is just moving it into IRAs. Uh, many of you are familiar with LERPs, uh, uh, life insurance that can be used for retirement planning. There's some advantages to that uh, around uh, maybe paying for long-term care. There might be less market value adjustment if we see a downturn in the market. Um, you can still use uh, municipal bonds. We use a little less with municipal bonds than we have maybe historically. Uh, just because I think the interest rates are so low and I'm a little concerned about a rise in interest rate and what that could mean to consumers. But if you're still in a higher tax bracket, municipal bonds can definitely be something you, you look at. Um, and then it's really just trading off and stress testing uh, mathematically, historically. Let's take the plan we're putting together. Let's test it, uh, backdating to what uh, would it, would it, how it would turn out in the past. And then we can start to look at um, what we're trying to accomplish going forward. So using some of these simple strategies, the one that most um, are very familiar with is a Roth IRA. I pay the tax on it today. After I put it in there, it will accumulate tax-free. I can take it out tax-free. And uh, one of the better advantages of it is also that there are no required distributions around Roth IRAs as they sit today. So that's a good one we can look at. And again, the life insurance is a good one too. It actually is uh, more families can qualify for that sometimes than what can with the Roth, but it's about using uh, maybe a combination of different tools that we can use to to help you reduce taxes and your tax burden. And then ultimately, you know, I know most families, the money is for you first, but um, also looking at how it may impact uh, down the road if you pass it on to a loved one or maybe uh, doing some tax smart charitable gifting. It's all these things that we want to make sure we're looking at. In fact, we're in the process of creating a new checklist just around taxes. Um, we're gonna probably settle in somewhere between 10 and 15 different bullets that we wanna go through with every family and then making sure that we're looking at it each and every one. Um, that's not something we have right now, but it's something that as we sit down, we can make sure we go through with everybody and start to look at this planning. A um, Couple of things I wanted to also talk about this week. I'll answer some questions if there's anybody that, uh, uh, wants to chat one in there. But um, we have a couple nice events that are coming up. I wanted to make sure you're aware of. Uh, I talked about right away um, in today's market huddle about next week. I want to talk about the three key takeaways from our Tax Smart Retirement Summit. That was the event we had uh, for those maybe joined a little bit later. Um, the last Thursday on September 30th with that slot, we, we took um, his presentation, we brought it down to the three that we think are the most important that everybody needs to, to look at. And we're going to go over what those were and, and make sure everybody can kind of learn from that, whether or not you were at the event. If you were at the event, uh, it'll be a good refresher. If you weren't, hopefully we can pass on some of that, uh, that knowledge that Ed Slot America's IRA expert shared with us. On October 18th, um, we have a money manager partner, Minneapolis Portfolio Management Group. We're going to have Tony Schenk back on talking about his portfolio. What are they seeing? And um, 
what do they have on their radar? What are some changes they're making in that portfolio? And then actually the very next week, we are going to do our lunch and learn. That's where we, uh, where you can join us in our office. We buy a, a lunch. We, we keep it down to about a half hour, like most of these market huddles. But come on out, visit with us in the office. Sometimes families use that as an opportunity to pull aside an advisor and ask them a question or two that they didn't want to schedule a full meeting for. Um, but uh, don't worry about that either. If anybody ever needs to to just visit with one of our team members, it's super easy to get on the calendar. I'm always available too, right? Um, but ideally, um, you know, let's schedule some time. We can do a 15 minute phone call and 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 address any of those concerns. If there's anything I've talked about today, uh, and you just want to have a short phone call, great. But if you haven't been in the office for six to eight months and with everything going on here, it's probably a really good time to do that before the end of the year. So we'd love to see you in the office. So um, here's how you can get a hold of us. Just uh, reach out to us. You can always shoot an info uh, at Secured Retirement's email. Uh, Penny, who manages our front desk, usually sees those and can allocate uh, who needs to address those. And then the phone number, uh, 952-460-3260. Great way to do it. And I'm actually going to give you access to our our um, accounts here, and you should uh, right now see a uh, where you can click on the um, where I just put up there, and that'll actually automatically put you on our calendars, and we can visit face to face. So uh, that's really all I had planned. Does anybody have any questions before I close up here? Give it another second or two, but. Um, in the interim, you know, today's um, market huddle, I really just wanted to talk about some urgency. Um, not trying to scare anybody. We don't know how fast some of these changes are going to occur. But as you start to dive into it, at a very high level, they're saying that a lot of these changes are only going to impact the ultra wealthy, the, the Peter Thiels of the world that have, you know, $5 billion in their Roth IRA. Well, um, historically, uh, legislation gets passed. And they start at higher levels, they work their way down. And I think that in a short period of time, a lot of what these changes are going to impact far more than just those ultra wealthy, those with incomes over 400 or 450. Uh, changes around uh, Social Security are also being proposed, not as uh, upfront, but I think we could see some changes around that as far as taxation around Social Security. So a lot of things around taxes. If you're not working with secured retirement on some of these changes and bringing it into your um to your current financial planning, I encourage you to, 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 to work with a trusted advisor that can start to talk about taxes because, um, you know, we're at 40 year lows here. And um, I think that the, uh, the, the, the what we've enjoyed tax wise for the last few years is about to come to an end. And I know that sometimes, you know, it feels like, boy, I'm paying far more than I should. When you recognize that historically, you know, they were at, uh, uh, you know, wasn't that far when Jimmy Carter came into office, we were still sitting at 70% taxes for many Americans. It wouldn't take long for, for a lot of us to really start paying a lot more in taxes. And the best defense is, is sometimes a very offensive strategy about how do I proactively address my tax situation? I don't see any questions. So um, I'll go ahead and wrap up today's call. I, I Great to see a lot of familiar names on there. If you haven't reached out to us, feel free to give us a call at the number you see there or get on our calendars. And we'll be back next week. And what we're going to talk about again next week, uh, three takeaways I think everybody needs to be looking at uh, based on what Ed Slot, America's IRA expert, that's not us, that's the Wall Street Journal that says he is the number one go-to expert in the country. He had a presentation with us last Thursday with 200 families um, we're going to kind of boil that down to the three takeaways we think everybody needs. So we look forward to seeing you all next week. With that said, uh, it's going to be another great fall day here in Minneapolis or fall week, it looks like. And hope everybody gets a chance to get out for a walk or runs out and does some things outside. And um, have a great rest of your day and the rest of your week. And we'll see you next Monday uh, with the next market huddle. where We'll talk about these three important key takeaways from the Ed Slot event. Have a good day. Bye-bye.